January, and I believe that's when Trump goes in the office. And if it was anything like last time, the moment he got in the office, he was pushing things quick. Like within the first week, he passed several bills quick. So things are starting to speed up. Now we know we know Trump is just a puppet for Amalek, who's the so-called Israelis, right? And we know that the agenda is to shall be wolf. They just doing whatever the hell they want to do. For fame, for vain gain, for aberration to be spoken, spoken well of, all of it, right? But clearly they don't read the scriptures because the scriptures clearly tell us that our job is to be separate from the heathen. See, we got this truth. Like the apostle said, they need us. They need us. We don't need them, okay? And if you really look at it, when you're at war, okay, we're at war here, right? Spiritual war. This devil can't win in this circle right here. He can't win. So he needs you to step out of bounds to go in his, to be in his territory so that he has a chance. Whether it be, yeah, more point of it. Whether it be carnal means, right, by being your carnal or whatever, or also just being a compromise. You're taking a deal, you're taking a bribe, right? Well, guess what? According to the scripture, you're not supposed to do that. And as long as we stay right here, we are untouchable, all right? So the suspect, how you see that these guys are trying to move, really to try to infiltrate, really like Great Millstone. Guess what, low woman, it's not gonna happen, okay? Because we, we see everything through the spirit, we call it out and we're moving, okay? Accordingly. This is the uh, book of First Peter chapter five and verse eight, and it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Right. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Right, so what, none of us are exempt from what's possible to come. But it said, your adversary, the devil, okay, as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, he's looking, right? So they're actually looking. They see us, they're, they're, the scripture says they are moved with fear. And they have a protocol, however they wanna take care of any, what they call the threat, you already know how. They set up evidence or whatever to label them on the books as a terrorist, which in this society, that's the worst thing you can be labeled, right? If they can label you as a terrorist and they can have uh, how do you say, a unanimous consent where everybody would say these people need to take be taken care of, okay? So, but let's say, let's say you don't have, they don't have anything they got on you, you squeaky clean. Well, you know how the devil rolls, right? He plants something. That, that, what, the whole point of Iraq, what do you think 9-11 was all about? An excuse to go in, go in there and steal. That's all it was, okay? So, you gotta know this man's history to know that he's gonna make a way to get what he wants. But the difference is what we're doing up here, we're doing the will of the Lord. So several times over, they done tried to so-called confound us, send people come up to us, using the Bible to confound us, but they're losing. 
Why? Because we got the Holy Spirit. So we know that in the end, they're going to result to carnal beings. But the scriptures teach us how to operate. The scriptures teach us basically that you don't, you don't want to give them the ammunition. Let them plan it. Let them do whatever they got to do because it's going to be even more evident that it's not true. Okay? Just like now, right? They want to try to convince at least the people in the West that the Israelis are just reacting out of defense and that they're the victims. Guess what? Nobody's buying it anymore. Nobody's buying it. So. The book is. Yeah. It's the book of 2 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there should be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom. The way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Yeah, so you still gonna have false prophets today. Now, we this late in the game to still be seeing on comment boards, well, I like all camps, right? Now, there may not be nothing wrong with that, but you can't be this simple to still realize that in this truth, okay, whether you, whether you want to accept it or not, the Lord wasn't with to go along to get along with the Spirit to come together for the simple fact that we're Israelites. Or as he put on the video, brotherhood over doctrine. That's not in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And you know if there's any group that opposes that, it's Great Millstone. You know that. We're not with that. We understand that there's gonna be false prophets, that there's gonna be raven and wolves dressed as sheep, snakes, vipers. So what do we do? We run a tight ship, okay? Now our hands aren't completely closed. We acknowledge the brothers that support us, the sisters that support, that follow and listen, all right? But because we understand our situation, we move wisely. Uh, verse three, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Right, because the, the source is the money, it's covetousness. Is gain, it's being spoken of, it's getting your name go thrown out there. It's being highly, uh, somebody speaking highly of you, okay? Like their leader over there, which is really just a child left to himself. All right, I, I've watched him for over a decade. He gets off on that, just like Nate, okay? He types his own paragraphs of how well he is. And the scripture says, he's supposed to let another man pray. But that's what Jake would do. And we have a council that in the Maccabees, right? you have, right? Of Jake going off script, going off course, because they want to seek an opportunity to gain something for themselves. When all you have to do is stick with the program that the Lord has set up. Right here. This is what the Lord got us setting up. Going out there and teach, prophesy, defend the word. That's it. That's right. And ain't say nothing about sitting down with the devil who you know is the adversary. Vocab is a, some strange figure. He's well known. He is an enemy to the nation. But you're going to sit down with him again to discuss the same topics of the which he've already we've already explained. He's not going to change. And to show you that was a complete waste of time, at the end of all that shit, you stuck with your way, he stuck with his way. What was the point? Right. It was stupid. And did the video was like, you know, basically trying to link, you know, brothers to some, some foolishness, man. Yeah, the very next day he goes and says, back to work because that's his that's his ass put this video up to make israelites look as the damn devil i mean as 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 a terrorist a video always done back in 2021 of some bug out who did something wrong but because uh, he had a liked video on his youtube playlist of an israel do you see how desperate they are do you see how they have to he's actually searching for anything to link and he has to pull that shit out Trying to make it seem like This is the book of Psalms, chapter 1, and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Right. So you got this 
got to understand who it is you're around. It says, blessed ain't who you never seek with the ungodly. All right, King David said, I, I don't sit with, I just never sat with the disassemblers. Oh, that's a perfect scripture to cut y'all, man. Can you find that book? I think that's all. He said, I didn't sit, I didn't <laughs> sit down with the disassemblers. It may be, it may be. But, uh, yeah, because you got no scripture to justify what you guys did. None. None. Okay? You went off script, and that's dangerous. And that's the point. Because, uh, yeah, how, how many years this back and forth thing been? He already is set in stone where he's on. He's a devil, man. So he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna change up. You know, Israel, us as Israelites, we shouldn't change it. We shouldn't, you know, uh, 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 deviate from the script, man. To add to that, the script is saying, shall the leper change the spots, man. You know, vocab, man, you're not going to change no matter how subtle you come and how peaceful you come. You know, because at the end of the day, the script is saying, Psalms 55, his words are spooking and, uh, and butter, but within his heart is war, man. He still draw the sword, man. And we're not expecting you to change. The issue is that you got so called believers, right? Sitting down in the time we're in. You just can't help but be like, right? And even their followers go on their coming board. They don't, they're not happy with what, 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 what transpired. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 5, verse 53. And the reason Judas gathered together those that came behind and exhorted the people all the way through till they came into the land of Judea. So they went up to the Mount Sion with joy and gladness, where they offered burnt offerings because not one of them were slain until they had returned in peace. Right, so now when you read the Maccabees, this is just one account, but there's many accounts of Israel in the, in the heat of the moment, right? We at war, you got what? Sell out. This account is going to show you that these guys failed to, to do that which was right. See, here it is. We just we just went to war and they came back and they praised the Lord because we didn't lose a single soul, right? That's something to rejoice in, okay? So that means we're doing good, right? So the Lord is with us, right? Keep going. Well, verse 55. Now that time, uh, Salaki, now what time as Judas and Jonathan were in the land of Galahad and Simon's brother in Galilee before Ptolemus, Ptolemaeus, Joseph the son of Zacharias and Azariah, captain, captains of the garrisons, heard of the valiant acts and warlike deeds which they had, had done. Wherefore they said, Let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that were round about us. Right, so you see, they had their heart to say, I, we want to be famous too. Let's go make a name for ourselves, right? So what did they do? As we're gonna read, they went off course. All they had to do was stick with the order. But their whole thing was using the opportunity so that they can gain some type of fame. See, that's dangerous, right? When you go off script, you risk the danger. Uh, or can you find a... Uh, Uh, 57. Wherefore they said, Let us also get us a name and go fight against the heathen that are round about us. So when they had given charge unto the garrison that was with them, they went towards Jamna. Jamna. Uh, and then came Georgius and his men out of the city to fight against them. And so it was that Joseph and Azariah, uh, Azarus were put to flight and pursued into the borders of Judea, and there were slain that day of the people of Israel about 2,000 men. Thus, thus was there a great overthrow among the children of Israel because they were not obedient to Judas and his brethren, but thought to do some valiant act. Right, so what ended up happening? They got put to flight, 
and they got 2,000 men killed trying to trying to get a name for themselves. Like the elder put it, like clearly there's no scripture to justify what he did. Clearly this guy just wants to be important, okay? He looked at it as my opportunity for me to talk, right? Yeah, just get us a name. And you know them guys are cutthroat anyway, so with the deacon absent, them guys like, I think I'm ready to go take number two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're gonna sit out with vocab, you know. Who the fuck knows, but it's stupid Shit. either way, right? These men, see, and what you gotta remember is the enemy looking at Judas, they know, they like, fuck. We need them to slip up. They, when they can't, when they know they can't overthrow, right? They need somebody to make a mistake. And here it is, two clowns came up. They like, up, oh, get them, right? They made a mistake. So they're actually relying, the devil, like vocab, he's relying, okay, on you guys to be either deceived by money, uh, to not have integrity, because that's how he gets you. He says, at the end of the day, because the devil knows at the end of the day, we can always buy a nigga out. Right. We can dangle enough money in their face, and they gonna sell out, right? That's yeah, why man, nigga is sell out for you. I mean, they got with the monkey uh, a few years ago. It was uh, giving out free crispy donuts. That's right. It's uh, free donuts. What <laughs> the uh, high fructose corn syrup, artificial flavor bullshit. Jewels for the jail. They knew they was gonna get Jewels. The check. It's crazy. And, and so when you look at it from the devil's foot like Volcat, he's sweating, okay? He got nothing. And he's looking for anything. And he needs you all, he needs basically us to slip up, to make a mistake, to open the door to let him in. Right. As long as we stick to the script, what the scripture says, where this is, where this safety is, we we're impenetrable. That's right. But he's always looking, and he needs some fool to step out of bounds, like these guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. We can sit out. We can talk. You know, I think you're a really good guy. I think you're. I don't know. Right. Was, uh, he's a really good. He's like, a really good I, like, I never had a brother. Sure, I wanted to give you a hug. And look, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. He's trying to make it seem like. To the devil, like we're homeless and we, yeah, he know that, he know that, but he got you on the defense and want you. Oh, I'm gonna clear my name. How can we be in this and be right. Fuck that, man. Like he, he already got a script. The heavenly Father put it in him how to be and what to be and what to do, man. He's right. the wicked, man. They got a job. Damn, nobody for me. Damn, nobody for me. Damn, nobody for me. Hey, we ain't got nothing. We don't have nothing. They haven't changed. Amen. Amen. Uh, Proverbs 11, 14. Can you make me? Mm -hmm. It says, uh, well, Proverbs 11, 14, it says, Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Can I read that again? God. It says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. Child left to himself will be woke. Just doing whatever the hell you want. That's why you just stick to the scriptures. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So you got the scriptures, you got the prophets, you got Paul, okay? And you got the, the brothers and the apostles. The apostles have already told you he's a persona non grata. He's not there to, he didn't already, look, he didn't already visit the apostles. He didn't already visit brothers in Chicago. Okay, the elders of Chicago. All right, he's a persona non grata. He's not coming to be persuaded. He's just coming to try to uh, disassemble. That's his goal. Break down. He's desperate. We've already, Ross has already called it out, and we stick into the scriptures, which is what we shall have no fellowship with the damn devil. That's what we're sticking back to the That's what we're doing. This, you, you're a clown. Okay, because he's desperate, he's fishing, he's looking, and you're you're gonna go out your your way to allow him in so that you can get some praise or something. That's stupid and it's dangerous. As we read, whenever you decide to do things for yourself and you go off script, I'm about I know how to handle this. I really just want to display 
ain't, he got motherfuckers that ain't quote no scriptures, just talk. Who is this? Who is this beneficial to? The mm. devil is like, yeah, hopefully we can do this again. Huh, huh, huh. That, yeah, because that's what you want. You stupid idiots, man. You clowns. And then you want to try to come around us. No, you can't come around us. Don't come around us talking about some brotherhood over doctrine or something. Mm -hmm. Of a breakdown. You know how we stand. That's why all at the same time is suspicious. Okay, so we sound the alarm to keep an eye out. Right. And like, I, like we counseled before camp, brothers on social media, if brothers start coming in your inbox, whatever, look, just be a Clark Kent on social media, man. Some, something's up. Something is up. All right? And the mistake they always make that Jake makes. It's starting to actually catch up to them. Like even the guys are perfect, right? They made a deal with the Egyptians. They're being dismantled as we speak. Okay? Because a leader we believe is ill. And you can see these horrible breakdowns they're doing recently. They're being dismantled. But that's why scripture that's says the covenant that you made with this place is going to fail. So you all going to find out because you looked at us like we were bums. That we were fools because we didn't want to do unity camps. Because we didn't want to trim our ways to seek love. Because we didn't want to be unequally yoked with the believers and do debates and meet with Sartnetta and do this and do that. Now, look who's trying to come around us. Right? So it's going to prove that us just following these scriptures is the best way possible. This is the safety right here. That's right. Where there's most two counsel, there is safety. Those two men deviated off course for their own vain uh, glory and they lost their lives, man. And they got 2,000 men that Jake killed. It's because Jake simple. Jake should have said, no, no, we got to stick to the script. You mean tell me ain't no one of them guys didn't have the sense to say, look, we should be sitting down with this man. You might have me bunk back. You might have me bunk back. This is the book of 2 John, chapter 1. This is the book of 2 John, chapter 1, starting at the ninth verse. Whosoever transgressed and abandoned not in the doctrine of Hamashiach has not God power. He that abided in the doctrine of Hamashiach, he has both the Father and the Son. If any come un if in if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine receive him not into your house neither be to him God speed for he that abideth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds okay so you know these people you know these guys talking about uh, brotherhood over breakdown they very well know GMS don't roll like that, okay? Okay, in GMS they say, we stick to the script, okay? I mean, we rebuke brothers, you know, within our own, uh, 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 within GMS. So what, what, do you, what do you stand, okay? We, we don't roll like that, okay? Brotherhood over breakdown, hell no. Breakdown over brotherhood, okay? Because if you read, and the eighth verse says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, okay? But that we receive a full reward, okay? We can't forsake those things that we get out here and talk about and teach and learn and edify others with. We can't forget those things, okay? Okay, because if you go further up, it says, and this is a love that we walk after his commandments. Okay? That's the sixth verse. Okay? So we got to abide by these commandments. Okay? And, and edify and show true love. Okay? And you can only get that through these precepts, through the doctrine. And we can't forsake the doctrine. Okay? That's all I got. And to add to that, you know, you want to talk about, you know, brotherhood of the doctrine. First and foremost, if y'all are brothers, y'all got to be speaking the same thing anyway. Right. You know, this is the book of 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. You know, you guys, in, in, within your own country, you're not in the same mind and the same judgment. I guarantee it's something
some guys that's probably looking at that and like, man, why are you sitting with him anyway, man? You know? So that is going to show you, man, that you want to talk about brotherhood over doctrine, you got to be able to speak the same thing regardless, man. Right. You know? That's right. But you know, that's Paul, brother. They don't get down with Paul. We down with Paul over here. Okay? So, hell no. Ain't no coming together. That's the first thing I'm going to bring up. Paul. But we ain't got to listen to Paul. I'm listening to Paul. Paul tells me not to listen to you. So, and, but again, mind you, this is going on for years. They having these debates, they having these marvelous Passovers, they making all this money. It looks like we're the losers, that we're the bums. But look at look at how things are changing. Mm -hmm. You 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 sit down with the devil. Who's who who only wants to see you really in the gallows, man. He's he's and, and then you're gonna sit up here and tell me he's gonna talk about some I just don't wanna see you burn. Yeah, I, I genuinely believe you. What? <laughs> And then he said, I, st I believe, I'm going to start off by saying, I believe he's going to serve us in the kingdom. Okay, so why you sit down with him? What's the point? Okay, Big Lord. Big Lord. Big Lord. Big Lord. Big Lord. Big Lord. Big a psalm of David, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I should not slide. Right? Uh, as a Sakari, he don't trust in Yahweh by Shemiel. Because, I mean, he pretty much denied the Savior. You know? Keep reading. Verse 2, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with uh, dissemblers. Yeah, see, that's King David. I have not sat with vain persons, nor do I go in with dissemblers. So he ain't just accepting people for the sake of accepting people. You understand? That's counsel. Right. That's, you're the most of the counsel, they're the same right. And uh, Vocab alone is a vain person. You know, uh, literally his whole ministry is based off of, I got to dismantle what the Israelites are teaching. Come. So what is there to talk about? That motherfucker is your sworn enemy. You know, but some way, somehow, and this just goes, this just goes you, uh, this just goes to show you the power of the devil. Uh, he convinced you that he's harmless. You know, one more verse. I've hated the congregation of evil doers, and I would not sit with the wicked. Right, right, right. Cut everything you did. It's not, but again, like the elder always say, Sakari was not a follower of the house. Right? Uh, uh, to the brother's point, uh, Salak, Salak. Quick, uh, it's the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. And it reads to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You know, and the scriptures also say can two walk together lest they be in agreement, you know? So if we speak in one thing and we, we teaching the true doctrine, you guys going off by sitting with the devil, speaking things outside of the scriptures, doing it for your own vain glory. So there's no light in you and it's going to be exposed in due time. This is... Uh the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 1 and this is Paul <laughs> finally my brother rejoice in the Lord to write the same to write the same things to you to me indeed is not grievous but for you it is safe beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of the concision now when you go into the concision that word means to mutilate or to cut. All right, so this man's whole agenda, his whole life's work is to try, if you will, to say that the Israelites are, are evil or wicked or terrorists, this, and that, that, and the third. What are you going to say? going to say they're they not the chosen yeah, people. Yeah, they, they, we're not the chosen people and so on. And here you have an outfit, a group, Sakari, this guy sits down with him. Well, in my own 
personal opinion, I speak as a man, you two deserve each other. <laughs> so fuck you, both of them, you know, because if you're a match made in hell, put it that way, all right? Because if that if that's what Yahweh Shimmy Al Shai wants, then you weaklings, you go ahead and join up with Satan. Go ahead and join up with the devil, okay? Because what that does, and for all your followers too, that want to follow you, you know, that gives us a better chance. Yeah, right. And then you're going to try to come around us. No. Okay, you ain't coming around us. So, in the 1611 King James Version, which is the first translation, mm -hmm. it's before uh, the New Testament. It's called the Apocrypha. But, I got a book, but it contains, the Apocrypha is contained in it, which is also a part of the yeah, Bible. Yeah. If you don't have it in your Bible, it looks like that if you buy it, buy it separately. The okay. same prophets that are written in the old are written in that book, uh, like Ezra. Two more books of Ezra. Uh, what that book of Enoch too? No, uh, no that's not, we don't deal with that. No, okay. Do you, so you believe the Bible? Um, you have a hard time with it, you see. Well, I'm just gonna try. Yo, I don't know, there's some, there's some disrepresents. Like, I know the letter J is like 500 years old or so. So it's a couple things. That, it's not even that old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a couple of things that they're talking about, a couple of things that they mention I don't necessarily agree with. I think that some of the things that, some of the messages are good, but I do believe that some of this can be taken out of context. Right. So our job, we believe we have 100% understanding of the So our job is to come out and relay the truth. And we ask the questions, like a lot of people think, oh, there's contradictions, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We actually bring out the truth, like you mentioned the letter J. Mm -hmm. It's actually good that you actually at least accept that, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go to the scriptures in the Old Testament, it was written in the Hebrew, the New Testament was written in the Greek. Gotcha. In both, there was no letter J, right? So you actually have to go into words to get real understanding of what's written, right? So like if we deal with the Lord's name himself, who the world calls Jesus, he really, that's not really his name, his name is actually a Hebrew. But when it was written in the Greek, it was written as E.H. Zeus. And what they did was, they didn't even translate it, they transliterated it. What that just means is they look at the Greek characters and they match them according to English the closest how it looks. So they took the letter I and put a J, the E, and they said, okay, that's an E, S, U, S. But there was no such thing as letter. But the name in Greek, Jesus, it means a Savior. Right? And the word Christ, which is the real Greek word, is Christos, is anointed. So really just means anointed Savior, but he actually had a name. And his name was the same as Joshua. And uh, that's just one. Then we can whatever it is, if you remember what it is you say um, don't make sense to you, don't seem right, we can explain what that really is. Okay. Is that the prologue of Ecclesiastes? Okay. Yes, okay. Yeah. That point. Yeah. All right. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, the prologue, and I'm starting at this. It says, Wherefore, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words which we have labored to interpret. For the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated to another tongue have not the same force in them. And not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. Right? Cool. So, we understand that some other things of understanding we may come short of because as they, as they wrote the prologue, when they labored, they labored many years to uh, translate. And so they translated the best they could their, their ability, but through the Holy Spirit we have understanding. So, it's actually important that a lot of times you have to go to the old and go into the word to know what it's talking about.
high for our sins. They're saying that we're under it's under a new decree or something. Like, it's a new covenant. Yeah, it's a new covenant. But even with that in mind, even when I try to rationalize it, you know, there has never been a situation in which you did a crime and someone else paying for it would mean you would be absolved of what you did. Right. So here's the, as far as it's like as far as like the so called white man paying for his sins, what he did to the nation of Israel, so called black Hispanic native man. Yeah, like the scriptures talk about a great recompense is coming to the nation of Edom, which are the so called white race. Okay. Because the Bible okay. condemns them. You know, the Bible is that a white man's book. Yeah. I know the, the uh, like what, the sixteen oh four version. It was authorized by King James. 1611. Like said, well, 1611, it was authorized by him, but it changed his name. Like, when you look at it, it's actually King Tim's. And, like, you can find the guy. It was kind of crazy. Well, I'll tell you this much. Now, you know, the Old Testament, the Old Testament, New Testament, this means Old Covenant, New Covenant. From the beginning, the covenant was only made with the nation of Israel. The New Covenant is only made with the nation of Israel still. Now, we're actually not completely under the New Covenant yet because the New Covenant still has to be fulfilled. There's still prophecies that have to happen first. And we'll just read to you what the New Covenant is and we'll show you how when it came to the Lord, the Lord calls him Jesus. So his real name is the power child. He made the sacrifice. The sacrifice was made. So now we're going to trace the way to the prophecies will be fulfilled. Then we're going to enter the Lord. So we're still... Basically, under the old, you can say, but we're not under uh, the, uh, the the curse of death for, uh, say, uh, breaking the law. Right? We're under grace. Um, did I have? I told you to get there, right? Is that the new code? Yeah, uh, 27. Yeah. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 27. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that like as I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, saith the Lord. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten our sorrow great, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their father in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. But the, so, the, the, you know, the Lord gave us laws, such as commandments. You're going to be my people. I'm going to be your power, your God. And you walk in my statues and my commandments. And you're going to be on high, whatever. If you break them, thus is why these people went into different captivities around the world. So the new covenant is, you know, he, he is explaining that now we're not going to be, I'll just keep reading it. Uh, like, uh, verse uh, 33 but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days said the Lord I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and and will be their God or their power and they will shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, said the Lord. Right, so part of the new covenant is that we're all going to know the Lord right. in our inner parts. Meaning we're going to be perfect. We're going to be perfect, the Israelites. The fact that we still have to teach, that proves that we're not in the new covenant right. yet. Right. Right. But it's coming. You got that? Eight, six. Uh, I got it. You got it? Read. All right. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, starting at the sixth verse. But, but now has he ordained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. 
for if that first covenant had been flawless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Just to make the point, a lot of people want to use the Lord to say the new covenant means everybody now. No, it said... No, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Right, so it's still only Israel. Come. And mind you, so we just read it in the old, now we're reading it in the new. Okay. okay. Not according to the old covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. They shall, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, know the Lord. For all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Come, verse 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that, in that he said a new covenant had he made with the had he made the first old. Now that which decayeth and was an old is ready to vanish away. Right, so it's ready to vanish, but it hasn't been gone yet, right? So the sacrifice was made. Can you go to chapter 10, verse 26? The sacrifice was made, so now we're no longer under the curse of the law as far as being put to death for our right, sins. Right, right. right. So now we're under greats, right? But the old law is still in effect, the ones that we're able to keep, right? I just want to make that point because a lot of Christians will use the Lord as an excuse to just say, I don't have to do anything anymore because of their failure to understand the new covenant. The new covenant, the sacrifice was made, is not fully in effect yet because we are, by, first of all, nope, there'll be no more death. Our bodies have changed. We can still die. We can still get sick. These are things we're looking for, right? And we still have prophecies to be fulfilled. But so the old is ready to decay away, and then in comes the new. So we're actually under grace. Con. Go ahead, read that. Con. This is Hebrews chapter 10, starting at the 26th verse. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So in, in the same book. If you sin willfully, because the scriptures tell you, like Paul, he explained, you can't use the Lord's death as an excuse to live a sinful life. That's not what he came to do. But that's what Christians are having to do. Oh, I can do whatever I want now because the Lord died for it. Actually, he died so that we could have, we could be covered with the boost of the But you're still supposed to keep the laws to the best of your ability, to your, uh, the best you can. You don't commit adultery. Uh, uh, you don't steal right from your neighbor. You don't, you don't try to uh, uh, murder, you know what I'm saying? The dietary law, you report for all those things, you're still supposed to keep the dietary law to the best of your ability. You're not supposed to eat those things, you're not supposed to eat pork and swine. You don't use his blood as an excuse to do what you want, because he just read, if you sin willfully, That's right. his blood doesn't cover. That's right. You understand? You got one basic back in the I was saying. Uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, and verse 22. <laughs> Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which ye have profaned amongst, among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Lord Yahweh, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. First of all, he's doing this for his name's sake because he loves us and his mercy, but it's only for his mercy. Yeah. Verse 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the all countries, and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols. 
will I cleanse you? Right. Like, and it says a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will, will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Right, so there's still promises that we're waiting on. Going to be gathered, the elect going to gather all four corners of the earth, and we're going to be put back into our true homeland, which is Jerusalem. Part of the curses is that the Lord is going to drive us out of our land. And now we're the only people really on the planet that don't have a land to call ours. Okay? Even if you say, oh, you go to Mexico, that's ran by Esau Edom. So, okay, Africa is ran by them. All right? And the Hamites and the Moabites. We truly don't have a place to call ours. And that's because we moved our Lord to rent. But we're going to go back to our land, which is Israel. That, I don't think that helps. You can ask your question or if you had another question. I really appreciate y'all getting the message about it. Yeah. There's a lot of lost souls out there. A lot of people that don't have really anything. You know what I mean? A lot of people aren't really studied up. They don't want to be necessary. But it's only given to a certain elect. And what we're going to tell you is that we want you to take the list to know that the Bible was written for you for Israel. Okay? These, uh, today we're called so called Black Latino Native American, but we truly have a biblical nationality, one of the sons of Jacob, one of these 12, right? We're God's chosen people. We're the ones that have a shot from the kingdom of heaven. We're the ones that the whole Bible was written for. The whole world was created. The whole world was created. You believe in the Heavenly Father, though, right? Uh, that's the thing, I'm not sure anymore. See, when I look at it, like, so I know, like, in the beginning text, I know God was translated to Elohim. But Elohim was plural, it was me. Right? So, like, with that in mind, I figured it was. What you believe that it's something. Right? Oh, definitely, yeah. Okay, like, come on, come on. But, it's like, a real, like, but the thing is, is that when you read in the book of Genesis, It's really Allah, it's really, it's really power, okay? Uh, powers, plural, because that's what the word God means. The word God means power, okay? So now, the Heavenly Father created everything because the Heavenly Father's name translated means He exists, okay? So that just lets you know that Yahweh exists, and because He knew that people would struggle with probably believing in. You know, that there's a higher power, but well, that's his name, you know, like his name is uh brings comfort to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's but that's really one, right, one more thing, one more thing. Yeah. When we read the book of Genesis, like you said, uh Elohim, it goes into uh the heavenly father given the word Igni calls Jesus Christ, his name in the Hebrew is Yahushai. And the rest of the angels charged to create everything that you see. God. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why they said powers, because the angels and Yahweh are powers. They're gods. Plural. You know? The reason he's called the only begotten Son because that's the first spirit that the Most High created, and through him, he gave him the orders to create us, right. and the powers, the elect, created the whole world. Right. Mm -hmm. We can explain it to you guys. Well, that's what we're here. We hey, the scripture talk about a well of knowledge. That's us. If I see, well, if I see all out here, I'm, I'm here. All right, all right, every one Sunday. More, one, one more. Hey, one more, bro. <laughs> it's Colossians one and fifteen, and it reads, "Who was the first? It's like it. Who was the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For well, by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones." For dominions and principalities, or powers of all things, were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, right? Talking about Yahushai, the Lord and our Savior. He says, uh, he was the firstborn of every creature. Because uh, prior to that, he was just the heavenly father. That's it. He just existed. And he created his son, and his son created. 
It's our job. It's so simple. But you know, with these other guys, oh, that's boring. Right? We gotta try to spice things up a bit. That's right. It's a uh, Let's bring up a debate. I'm a debate of Christian. All right, everybody gather around. All right, you get 30 minutes, 20 uninterrupted. I get 10. Well, fuck that shit. Right? shit. You can't contain right. the spirit like that. Because what did you know, uh, uh, Elder Apostle Hor say, man? We ain't we we out here to lecture you, motherfuckers, man. We ain't out here to hear what the fuck you gotta say. That's we right. Know what you gotta say. Some bullshit. And, and and the funny thing about it, we we hear it. Over and over and year over after again. year, man. It's literally the same thing. Right. And awesome. I was just gonna say that we can just dismantle it every time. Yeah, there's there's an old saying for those who a wise wisdom you know, that says, I debate my equals, all others I teach. That's right. So, so we don't have time to debate nobody. You know, that's we not we not here for that. The woke is true, or uh, you know, really, it's either for you or it's not. You don't have time to convince. You gotta convince your damn self. The Lord didn't give you the spirit to understand and believe, then it's, it's hey, you wasting our time talking to you. Yeah. Like the brother said, it's people out here who looking for it, but it ain't nobody that's, you know. Telling them the truth, man. They confuse him. Oh, um, this is Romans chapter six and verse one. What shall we say then? Uh, going back to uh, 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 Salaki, Salaki. Going back to uh, the original topic, you know. Uh, on how, you know, they trying to catch, you know, the really GMS in the gym, man. And you guys is, is, is you helping, you helping, man. You know, uh, this is Amos chapter three and um, verse three. Can two walk together except they be agreed with a line? And, and the answer is no, man. That's that's just a that's a constant struggle, you know. <clears throat> will a lion roar in the forest when he has no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no chin is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? And, and you guys is the bird, man. You guys is the bird, man, falling in that trap, man. Like, what are you doing? You, you know, the scripture tell us that, you know, uh, your adversary, the devil, he roams like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Right. Now, what, what, what you think he gonna do getting up close on you like that? Checking you out. See what, what, what angle he can take. That's that's all he can do is see what angle he can take to try to use a war tactic against you. And bam, what do you know? He did the very next day. All right, and he needs you to do it. Don't you understand how desperate he is? John. He needs suckers like you to, to, to go outside the scripts, right? And to try to insert the will of man. He needs that to get access. Don't you get it? You're giving him access. Right, like the brother Taz Warm did a weekly lesson about uh, covetousness. That's pretty much all that is, is, is just covetousness. You know, uh, wanting that top spot. You know, and it's not even a, it's not even about that. You know, what did King David say? Hey, I'd rather be a doorman in the kingdom of heaven. Roughly paraphrasing. Right? Hey, just as long as I make it, that's all I care. Right, like, like you, you're trying to gain a name for yourself, but really just gain a, a deal name. Right. See? Just like the man we read. Being foolish. All you got to do is stick to what's written and just be happy that we're winning the war and that we're going to come out. You're trying to seize the opportunity. Well, I want to have a name too. You know? I want to be famous too. You think it's going to, I think I'm fit. 
thrust yourself into the, the you know, uh, renowned spot, man. The scripture tell you against that, man. You know, uh, uh, and you have to be able to be a good follower first in, 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 to even lead, man. Y'all not following the commandments, the the the, the counsel. Y'all not taking heed to it, man. So what, like, what 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 good would you be in, you know, a, a, a leadership seat? Novices, man. And that's why you know, Paul instructed for those positions in the church, like a bishop or a deacon, they had to be properly vetted. Mm -hmm. No right. novices, no, because right. these guys just want the position so that they can, uh, you know, multiply wives or something. Right. Most, right. Most to yourself. You know? Be covetous. Because you're going to have access to all that money. That's why Paul said they cannot be covetous because right. they could easily fall into that snare. Right, because he had, uh, was it, I, I, I think it was Eli, his sons, Phineas and Hophni. Yes, right. uh, basically, that was, uh, they was like multiplying wives to themselves. You know, they was just playing with the women of the congregation. topic to women, but the scriptures warn you about the wickedness of a woman, you know, from, you know, from, uh, from garments of moth and from woman wickedness. So that was, so that was pretty much just easy targets, you know, especially for wicked ass niggas like that. This is, a. Uh This is the book of Luke, chapter 14, and I'll start at verse 7. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief room, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man a place, and thou began with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit and meet with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. You know, and, and self-explanatory, man. You can't, you can't seek to be exalted and, and, and you know want the highest room, man. You gotta you gotta take the low and let the Lord bring you up. You know, and they're not doing it. What scripture was that? Out? That was uh, Luke 14 and uh, 8, 8 to uh, 11. Okay. Go on, go on. I'll go read this real quick. I think I had this, uh, yeah, going off what you said. But this is Mark 121. And they went, uh, and they went into the into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. He taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribe. So, like your brother said, calling the apostles. We got the 100% truth. Our job is to teach you. That's it. What are we debating? Hell yeah. If anything, yeah. we're just defending the gospel. You got some BS, and we're defending that it's true. And a lot of you don't know. That's why he had, he said, it's a lot of things that don't sit right. Feel free to explain. We had to break it down. And I bet he probably never heard that. Yeah. Yeah, he probably never heard that. Yeah, right, yeah. See, that's, that's it. You know, basically, we got 100% true. Precept, precept, precept. precept. So now he knows, like, okay, I can ask him any question. 
head, we're gonna break it down. You sincere, we'll explain it to you. Okay? Because yeah, you can get lost in these churches and not fully well, understand I had what's written. You want them. But like the Howard Shine, he spoke with authority. <laughs> you know? You want them? So they do you like this guy here. Uh, like they just some uh, uh, pull over. Because he knew. Uh, so what is your Howard Shine? He have to debate with anybody? You're just telling the truth. Because I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> you know, like, like, how, can we, uh, how can we overthrow it? And a scarf. I got a scarf. And then he said, <laughs> like, even his disciples asked him, well, why do you speak it in the terms? And he said, it's for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. You know, but to them, it's not given. But I got something. Brother Tazza Wong, yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I got it. Uh, you can go tell you. This book of Colossians, chapter 2, and verse 6, it reads, As ye have therefore received my shock, now I will shine the Lord, so walk ye in him, right? Rooted and built up in him, establishing the faith as ye have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Right? And that's what that man, they sit down at their table. That's what he was giving. Vain deceit. Okay? After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Mashiach. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. Right? So, you know, you sitting there, you trying to make a deal with the devil. That's vain deceit, man. Even if he told you, yeah, I'll give you whatever you want. That's vain deceit. Now, not even that, guess what? Your ass is bounced out. If you ever had a chance, now you do it. Yeah. Going against the script. Yeah. Like, what you, what you, who do you think you was gonna convince, Jake? <laughs> like, Jake, at this point, a lot of people know, like, oh, no, man. Go to the comment board. Your followers ain't happy. Because right. you have no justification in That's the right. scripture. Zero. Should have followed Yahweh Shai, like the scripture said. <laughs> this is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, right? And um, we're just going to go with the 15th verse. It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matter, okay? Now, you know Vocab Malone ain't never, never, never been for this doctrine, okay? And he come to you, and you like, oh yeah, that makes you a busybody, okay? Whether you came to him, or he came to you, because you already know what he's all about, okay? Trying to make us look bad. That makes you a busybody. Okay, and other men's matter, trying to be down with his program, okay, instead of sticking to the scriptures. Okay, that's all I had. Is, uh, is it about the suffering? Yeah, about suffering this crisis says, uh, if ye be reproached for the name of Hamashiach, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory of God power rests upon you on their part his evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. operate out here, right? The devil is going to look for ways to try to disassemble. You don't want to give it to him. You know how this devil going to roll. He's going to set a snare. But just if when you let them do it, it's going to be more evident that it's bullshit. And it's going to be harder for them to prove their case when it's clear as day that this is a bunch of BS. And just like uh, Pontius Pilate, when he had Yahweh shot, he already knew this is some BS. Because he's sitting there like, what the, what the hell did he do? He, he asked you how it shot. How, what, what did you do? How it shot just silent. So he's going back to them. 
look, I'm about to go ahead and let him go. No, no, kill him, you know. And he like, what? What did he do? And he said, what? He knew that there was just a, a, a envy. And there was a tobo made against him. Right? So that's how that's how you want to be. When they come and get you, whatever, you want it, you want it to be known that you are uh, not guilty of what they actually say you want. But they're just uh, 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 framing it, right? To, because they try, they, they know you have a problem. That's how you gotta let vocab the snake come in. Because at the end of the day, he's waiting on this opportunity. Okay, he's gonna be the first one on the mic. When the opportunity arrives to slander the Israelite, he's gonna be the first one there, and he's gonna put on a performance. You go, you gonna see tears and, and everything. He gonna bring it all out because that's his goal. It's to send us to the gallows. You understand? But you don't want to give him anything. Let him fucking be out there thirsty and starving and talking to black women. That's all he's doing anyway. I noticed, I noticed he, had, he ain't never had a single Edomite woman on the channel. He's always eat. Look at that. And I believe that's because he's Amalek. And the thing about Amalek is they uh, they imposters. They all want to be Jake, you know? Maybe he trying to give him a sister or something. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to do all that. You got endless options because they'll, they, they there to join against the man. You, you can make them different, you know? But you, at the same time, it's because you're trying to be like us. You want to try to get an afro and grow your beard out. You're trying to teach like the apostles. Yeah, so the real word there, you learned that from us. You fucking imposter, you snake. Right. Fit him to the teeth. Esau eat him, uh, a serpent, you know, a snake, you know, and that's all, um, well, serpents are reptiles, you know what I'm saying, and that's one of the, the a serpent's uh, powers, is camouflage, camouflage and blending into their environment, you know, you really want any strings. Hate us because they hate us, you know. And and he's out there losing sleep, sweat, Google anything. He probably got all kind of uh, tips anytime the cops put something through with keywords popping his story. And I guarantee you, he's looking. Terrible, uh, uh, terrible, uh, terrible, uh, uh, white man. <laughs> <laughs> what? This guy was had a liked video in his playlist, and it was a, it was a liked video, huh? You know, let's bring this out. Like, look how desperate they are. Yeah. Let them, look at how bad that looks. Let them do that. You don't want to give it to them. You understand? If you, when you suffer, you want it to be for the truth, only because of the truth. Right. Don't give them ammunition to help 